Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm uh, Raja Rao. I'm uh, really thrilled to have you here. And along with me, I have uh, Skip Scholz. He's the product manager for Lightning Components. And um, he's going to be co-presenting at the end of this uh, webinar. So, so this is our uh, safe harbor statement. The gist of it is uh, Salesforce is a publicly traded company. So if you are uh, making any purchasing decisions, please do so based on publicly available um, information as opposed to whatever we may say in this webinar. Here's the agenda. Um, so first of all, I'll quickly go over the overview of the Lightning Components. And then um, the agenda is filled with demos, as you can see. So first one, I'm going to talk about how you can use our Lightning plugin for Sublime Text Editor, uh, both installation and usage. And uh, after that, I'm going to talk about how to build a multi-view single page uh, Salesforce on mobile app. And um, the third demo I'll be doing, uh, actually not me, it's, uh, after, after my two demos, Skip is going to join, and then he's going to show his uh, Lightning REST service. And then he's going to show our Lightning components, App Exchange, and um, also talk about the roadmap. So finally, uh, Q and A. So we'll discuss a lot about. Uh, we'll answer all your questions. Uh, by the way, feel free to ask any questions on the chat window on the right hand side in the GoToMeeting, and uh, we'll copy them and we'll try to answer as many as possible at the end of the webinar. Okay. So Lightning Components overview. So this particular webinar is a deep dive. So I'm going to just give a very high level uh, overview of Lightning Components. Um, so you might have heard about Lightning, Com Lightning um, launch at uh, Dreamforce. You may also be familiar with Lightning Components or you may have heard about Lightning a lot. When you hear about Lightning, it's not just about one single technology, but it is a, a bunch of technologies all catered towards or all targeting towards making your app development uh, really uh, quick and easy. Because when you think about app development, it's not, about, not just about coding, it's also about uh, doing um, connecting to third-party data from using you know Lightning Connect, or it could be uh, building processes in the back end. So all these things kind of um, come together uh, when you're thinking about app development. Uh, but in this webinar, we're going to just talk about uh, component frameworks because uh, we have a lot of other webinars and uh, demos on YouTube and other places for the other com other parts of Lightning. Okay, so Lightning components framework. Um, is one of the brand new uh, uh, JavaScript UI front-end framework that is uh, um, that kind of helps you build your application by decomposing your application into components. So this is kind of the future uh, of action of uh, JavaScript UI development. Uh, if you look at the slide here, you can see all the latest and greatest um, um, big name companies and latest and greatest JavaScript frameworks are all. Uh, kind of um, asking you to build your JavaScript apps while using components. Because this is because it's much easier to build components and simply assemble them as opposed to um, you know trying to build a single large monolithic application. So what can you build um, using Lightning Components? So first of all, you can build a component and then run them along uh, in a standalone desktop application. And uh, you can also build components and run them in, in Salesforce One mobile app. And you can replace a Salesforce One uh, components with your own custom component. Okay, so here are the, some of the examples of uh, what you can build. So if you're already building a Salesforce, uh, if you're already using Salesforce One mobile app, that means you're already using Lightning. So this is one of the mobile examples. And if you're using uh, Lightning App Builder, you can uh, easily use um, this whole entire Lightning app builder is also uh, built using Lightning components. Although this um, app builder is used for um, uh, in demoing your Lightning components. And then the Lightning process builder. So this is another example of an app that is uh, built using Lightning components. So now that we kind of uh, went through the overview of Lightning, um, Lightning uh, components framework, so let's talk, take a look at how to use them in uh, um, how to build a Lightning Components app using uh, Sublime Text Editor. So the Sublime Text uh, plugin, or the Lightning plugin that um, I'm going to talk about, doesn't directly talk to Salesforce. Instead, it also uh, it makes use of something called as a force.com CLI, which is a command line utility that runs in the background and talks to Salesforce in order to make changes or create your application. 
So in order to use this Lightning plugin, you kind of need to uh, both install multiple um, uh, tools, and then once you are done, you can start uh, developing Lightning components locally. All right. So in order to uh, first install Lightning component, first of all, you need to have Sublime Text Editor. So although it kind of this button shows that you can only use it for um, Mac OS, you can actually click here and then you can install it for any platform you want. So once you install Lightning uh, Sublime Text Editor, you can go to packagecontrol.io. This is the place where you can see a list of all plugins and uh, plugins for Sublime Text. So you can see that it actually has like hundreds and hundreds of uh, um, plugins for Sublime Text, including the one of, one of them is the, our Lightning plugin. So, but in order to install all these plugins, you first need to install the package control plugin itself. So in order to do that, you go here and you go to, you open up your Sublime Text and go to View Show, uh, show Console and then copy paste this text here and it's going to install the package control. So that uh, kind of installs your package uh, controller, control plugin, and once that is done, you will be able to install your Lightning plugin. The second part is to install Install Force CLI. So again, you go to force-cli.haruku.com, and then over there you can see uh, different uh, for versions of Force CLI for different operating systems. And then you can go and uh, simply download it and um, you know install it. So once you download it, there are you got to kind of uh, do a couple of things. First one is to um, make it executable. If you're on Mac, you just do ch mode force. I have I happen to have uh, I happen to have uh, the force CLI on my in my downloads folder, so I've just made it uh, ch mode 777 and made it executable. And the second thing you, you want to do is to kind of add it to your path. So I have added the downloads entire folder to my path. You can add just the um, <clears throat> just the tool itself to your path. So as long as you have force. Um, in your path and it is executable, you should be able to do force space version and then you can see um, the version of the, the force CLI tool. Uh, your uh, Salesforce, uh, your uh, Lightning plugin for Sublime will start to work because all the uh, Sublime text um, the Lightning plugin does is to send commands to this force CLI tool. Okay, so once you kind of install both of them, uh, let me open up my Sublime and show you what you can, how to actually use it. So first thing you do is you select uh, one of the folders that you have, and then you right click on it, and then you will see. Uh, okay, before you do even come here, you need to first do Command Shift P and then install package. So this is the package controller that we installed previously, and then it's going to show you to ins uh, allow you to install Lightning. So you just type. You just type Lightning, and then it will show you the Lightning uh, plugin if it is not already installed. So it's not showing for me because I already have it installed. But that's where you see the uh, Lightning plugin, and uh, and then you can simply select it to install it. So once you install that, you come to the uh, select any folder you want and right click on it, and then do the login. So I'm going to do Salesforce login, and it's asking me for username and password. I don't want to enter it here. I'll just just do uh, just hit enter, and then it opens up um, <coughs> our what flow in our in a browser. So once I am there, I just select my R that I want to use, and then I'm going to log in. Okay. So now when you see this screen, which means your the four CLI is already logged in. So at this point, you're already done. So you can see in the back uh, at the bottom here. Uh, it says that I'm already logged in. So from this point onwards, you can actually start you building an app on Lightning, um, building Lightning Components apps. So when you do that, first thing you do is to right click light, um, Lightning, and usually what you want to do, you may want to do is to fetch all your all the Lightning stuff um, that you already have built in your R. So you can do that by selecting Fetch Lightning. I'm not going to do that, but I'll show you different things that you could do. Um, when you fetch Lightning, it kind of creates a folder called metadata, and then another subfolder called Aura. So inside that, it's going to download all your existing Lightning components from your org. So once you do that, um, so similarly, you can right-click again and do fetch metadata, and you could say static resource, and then you can download any of your static resources. 
So similarly, you can um, you know right click and then also install uh, download your um, for example your Apex classes or triggers and stuff. So when all those Apex classes and triggers they're all uh, get downloaded in a folder called classes, and then all your static resources gets downloaded in a folder called static resources. So now that you know how to download it, let's start uh, try and build a simple uh, lightning comp uh, lightning app right from um, our Sublime uh, using our Sublime Text plugin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the Aura. So if you want to create a a new app, you need to right click on the Aura folder the parent folder of all the Lightning components. So and then I'm going to say create app. So I'm going to uh, call it as my one, my app. Okay, so now, oh, so you cannot have uh, one. So let me change the name. And then I'm going to make it a different name. Apparently it doesn't like one in the name. So let's say one, my Lightning app, bigger font, okay. Okay, so now you can see it. Hopefully you guys can see it now. Okay, so, <clears throat> and it, it basically gives you a template, and I'm gonna call it as my app, and then save it. Hopefully, if it is saved, uh, I should be able to go to my one app, let's see where it is. Okay, one my app, and then right click on it, and then do a preview of it. So when I do a preview, again, it asks me for logging in because the uh, browser doesn't have the OAuth um, session yet. So I'm gonna log in again. Similarly, I can also create um, create components. So let's create a simple component here, one CMP. So I have a component now, and then I could go to one component, and then you can see that context actually switches. So I can now add a controller to this, I could um, then add a helper and a style sheet. Let's see, style sheets and documentation render everything. So pretty much everything you could do from your Dev console, you can now do it from Sublime. So it's pretty. Uh, I've been using this kind of uh, for like two three weeks now and. It's been extremely helpful, uh, especially when you have when you think about applications that may have like four or five different components, and each component may have four or five individual artifacts. So now you're dealing with 10 different tabs or 20, 30 different tabs. So we just the Dev Console is you know it's very hard to use Dev Console when you have so many tabs. Whereas it's a, it's really a pleasure you know in to use it in uh, Sublime Text. So not to mention, one more big advantage that you'll get using this kind of a uh, setup is that you can now upload your source code to GitHub and you can do both version control and also deployment on the uh, on your dev box um, simultaneously without having to worry about how do you version control your source code. So, and the last thing is it, I already showed you that comes with them, you know, hundreds and hundreds of plugins. So you can make use of all of them along with um, along with Lightning. So uh, hopefully you guys are going to start using it and, um, and let us know. We are definitely uh, looking forward to your feedback to improve these, this plugin and make your developer experience a lot more uh, comfortable and a lot more proactive. Okay, so now that brings us to building a multi-view Salesforce One app. So. Let me show you, um, before I go here, so let me show you the app itself so you can see what it is. Okay, let me log in. Okay, while it's loading, so this is a really simple expense tracker app. Uh, some of you might have seen it um, in our, dev, uh, in our uh, developer guides. So what I did was I took that same example, but I made it multi-view. So when I say multi-view single page app, I mean that you can go from, you can have multiple views, like a list view and a detail view and edit view, and then you can navigate from one view to another view with ease, and also keep context and get a back button and so on. So here is a simple expense tracker app. I can you know select the reimburse and then it turns into green and stuff. But when you select this, you see that it's kind of slided out. It had a 
uh, to the left, and then it also sh is now showing a back button, so you can go back and forth. Uh, and it is using Salesforce One's native navigation uh, controller. So using that, you can it, you can even pass in uh, you can get the back button, and also you can pass in the context. So one thing to note, one other thing to notice is, as and when I'm coming here, you can notice that the Shiki restaurant here, or uh, the dinner, so the entire context of the selected item on the list view is being passed back and forth between the views. So the way I have designed this is uh, each of these views are, are basically one large component. So this first view, the list view that you're seeing is what I'm calling it as a main component. And then the second view is what I'm calling it as create or edit component. So I'm also using Twitter Bootstrap to kind of style it. Uh, which is uh, kind of comes in handy because when you're know, building large apps, you may want to use your own themes, not necessarily Bootstrap, but some other theme for your company. So I'm going to show you how to uh, style your, um, how do you load third-party CSS and JavaScript uh, in your app, and then I'm also going to show you how the navigation actually works. So first, let's start with loading a third-party uh, app, third-party libraries. So that's where the LTNG require component comes in. So this is a new component that we released uh, for 194. So basically, it allows you to easily load any CSS, even multiple CSS and multiple JavaScript files in your application or your component. And the way it works is you simply use the LTNG require. And in the styles, for the styles attribute, you enter all your CSS separated by comma. And it starts loading each one of them um, in the order uh, that you have listed. And uh, similarly for JavaScript files as well. And uh, finally, there is also it also takes um, an optional after scripts loaded uh, event. So you can add, you can say, okay, when all these JavaScript files are loaded, call this function. This is comes in. This comes in very handy, especially if you are loading a bunch of JavaScript files asynchronously, and then you need to wait for all of them to get loaded in order to initialize your app. So all, in order to, in that kind of scenario, all you do is you create a controller or an action, um, <coughs> um, an action um, JavaScript function that simply uh, listens to the all scripts loaded event and uh, initiates your app. So let me go back to the app source code here and show you how it works. Means Okay, main CMP. So notice here, this is the main CMP that, that had the list view. So you can see that there is an iteration tag here. So this is where each of the list items are coming from. But this is the overarching main container that contains the list view. So at the top, you can see here, I'm using LTNG require to load bootstrap. So one thing to note about LTNG require is because of security cons security reasons, we only allow you to load JavaScript and CSS that are in uh, static resources. You cannot load it from CDNs. Uh, we may in the future um, provide a whitelisting capability for your admins to whitelist some CDNs and then um, load it from those CDNs. But right now, we only allow you to load it from your static resources. So. The next thing to note is, like, when you're using these popular libraries like Bootstrap, Foundation, and others, uh, they all are very aggressive. They try to style every element in the entire application, even if it is outside the application. So what happens is, when you try to use Bootstrap, it, it styles bleeds into other components, that, um, like, for example, Salesforce One components. So in order to avoid that, what we need is we need to namespace this entire CSS file that you get from, uh, from Bootstrap. Uh, from Twitter Bootstrap. So in order to do that, what I've done is I've created a new tool that you can use uh, anytime you want called um, Bootstrap Namespacer. So Bootstrap Namespacer um, is a simple tool that takes a CSS file. You can provide uh, regular CSS or minified CSS, and you can provide any namespace. This is not related necessarily related to your args namespace. This is just a CSS namespace. So I'm going to say Jedi, and I'm going to hit Enter. And all it does is it's going to add a namespace uh, that you provided to the entire file. So just to repeat, uh, so there is this uh, tool 
that I built called uh, Bootstrap Namespacer, or it's just a regular CSS namespace, uh, CSS namespacer. Um, all it does is it takes a CSS file and then it adds a simple namespace. So you can see in, in this example here, so if this is your input, this will be your output. Um, so once you get that kind of an output, so you simply save this entire CSS file. You simply, so you can simply rename it and then save it as a, uh, at whatever you want, and then you upload it to static resources. So once you upload it to static resources, you can now consume this without uh, worrying about harming other, um, you know, other or bleeding into other components or other um, apps in Salesforce One or otherwise. So once you load it, that's not the end of it. You also need to change your, you also need to wrap your um, component in the using that namespace. So this, uh, you just need to have a div with that namespace. So if you have Jedi. You say like that, and then you wrap the whole thing inside that uh, con uh, inside a simple container, so that uh, all your um, HTML that gets generated will uh, will get that specific style supplied, but not the uh, it won't bleed into the rest of the application. So one other thing to note here is I'm only using this lightning resource for the main. Uh, application that uh, so this also allows you to build different components um, and different views without worrying about um, without worrying about the theming per se and uh, you can uh, kind of presume or you can say that you know you need people need to have a bootstrap or some other uh, themes on their main component for it to display properly so you can kind of presume that and build your application and as long as someone else provides your theme and puts it in the main application it's going to start start to work. So that's the whole loading of the bootstrap and uh, um, uh, loading uh, LTNG require component. So I also talked about the CSS namespacer. So the last thing is the force navigator component. So this is for Salesforce one only. So this is a really useful um, <coughs> event that you could use in your component where you can say, hey, you know, when something happens, when people press a button, go to this other event, go, go to this other component. So the syntax of this is just like what you're seeing on the slide. You simply say e dot force e is for event, dot force is the namespace for this, uh, uh, for this uh, event, and then say navigate a component. And if you just say dollar a, dollar a stands for aura, so a dot get and you follow this and then you get the event and the properties for it is the first one is a component def which is the namespace colon your component whichever component you want to open and then the second one is the components attributes so this is where you set any of the properties that you want to or data that you want to transfer from one component to the to the other component and you simply fire it so this this is a syntax you need to add to go from one to another. It's simple. It is as uh, simple as that. So now going back to my application. So you can see that you can open uh, my expense list controller. So that's exactly what I'm doing. When I open expense list component, so I have whenever someone clicks on this, on the on the list item, I'm going to call open edit view um, action function or a JavaScript function. And in my JavaScript function, all I'm doing is navigate to that component. And then it so happens it is the create and update component, and I'm passing in the expense um, you know, data or expense object to that other component where it will receive and render that. And the same thing happens when you come back as well. So that's uh, pretty much it. I think um, we have some time right now. If you have any questions, um, that um, needs to be answered, you know, I can answer them. Okay, so the question is, is there a plugin for Eclipse? Currently, we don't have such a Lightning plugin, but uh, I believe that, you know, if you're, um, there is, our engineers use uh, Eclipse for development, but they also use Java server um, locally for development. So I believe there may be some version of it, but not exactly this one. Is Sublime a free or a paid version? So it is kind of both. So you can get it for free, but you know, it, uh, after some time, it will ask you for you know to pay. But you can continue to use it without paying. But you know, you can also pay for it. 
So in a way, it is kind of both. It's kind of merely doesn't it won't shut down if you don't pay. Is there a guide for setting up uh, Sublime Text uh, for Lightning? So um, Dave Carroll, my manager, who built this plugin, so he has uh, created a video. I will be posting that. Um, you can also take a look at what I just talked um, in this webinar. But we will be posting that video, and we'll also update, be updating the the readme for that uh, in, on the GitHub. Uh, for you to use. Is there any chance for there will be plugins for other ideas? We are definitely talking to people to build similar ones. Um, not sure about when uh, they will be available for ideas like Atom and other things, but we can't promise. But I think you know right now this is the first step, so we think that it's going to be very useful to just use Sublime at this point. Uh, but we're definitely looking into other supporting other editors. Oh, can you explain about aura colon if component? So, so aura colon if is simply render something if the value is true or not. It's uh, it's as simple as that. So you can you can set some value to it as long as that value is, uh, you know, the value is true, it displays that. Otherwise, it won't. So someone is asking, what is Bootstrap? So Bootstrap is just a very popular library from Twitter. Um, so. You, a lot of people use it for theming and styling. All right, All right. so I'm going to switch to Skip now so that he can talk about um, REST service and also talk about App Exchange and Roadmap. OK, thanks, Raja. Um, I'm going to show a few things here um, that relate to what Raja was just showing. And I'll show you a few new things and talk a bit about the Roadmap. Uh, again, I'm the uh, PM for Lightning Components and also for some of the technologies we use for Lightning customizations, uh, some things you might know as Lightning extensions and other pieces. So let me show you a few things here that we've been working on. Uh, first off, uh, we have this uh, new initiative, which are the LTNG components. Um, LTNG is short for Lightning, just a quick developer way to write that out instead of typing the forward Lightning. Um, the first one out there is LTNG require, and it's, uh, again, the first Lightning component, hence the little uh, play on uh, the Captain America poster. If you look in your R docs now, if you go to your org slash R docs slash reference dot app and you expand, you can now see LTNG require. I give that a second to reload and go in and see the docs. It's actually very easy, um, very straightforward to use. And uh, we ask that everyone start adopting that. As Raja mentioned, it has been approved by the product security team. So if you use this, you won't. Uh, run into the problem of uh, trying to get it through extra security measures. So if you've been using Require JS and so forth, please move over to using Lightning Require. Uh, this is the first of many components that we'll be providing. Uh, you'll see these appearing over time in the events, interfaces, uh, ultimately some application templates and that sort of thing. So uh, the goal of these is to make them easy to use. A lot of them will have a markup centric um, programming model, so you, JavaScript will be optional. And a lot of them will also have a app builder uh, face on them uh, by default. So they'll be made for use in the declarative tools, uh, the, the visual tools, and so forth. So um, uh, some of what we talk about today will be very programmatic. But remember, a lot of that is to actually support the declarative use of things. So uh, even though you may be building components at a uh, what seem like a low level to some of the of folks out there, uh, they're all designed for use with our declarative tools. Um, yeah, everything's metadata driven, packageable, and so forth. Uh, let me go ahead and show you a little demo here. Um, this is a new LTNG component called HTTP, and it's modeled loosely on those from Angular and Polymer and others, in that you have a component that you configure with the parameters uh, for setting up an HTTP connection. And you can see a lot of these reflected here in the attributes. Um, if you haven't gone through the tutorials for Lightning, um, you may not be familiar with some of this terminology, but it's actually very straightforward in that a component has attributes that are effectively its public face. It's the things that something else can use in a composition model. Uh, somebody asked me what component composition is, and that's basically saying a parent component can have one or more child components, which in turn can have child components. Um, but it's important to remember that when you're dealing with components, um, your component doesn't know where it exists. It doesn't know which app it's in, which container it's in. It doesn't even know what its parent is. And it doesn't even have any idea of who its siblings are. Um, a parent component can uh, see the attributes of the children, but not vice versa. 
And most, in most cases, your communication between components is via events. So you listen for events, you fire events. What you don't do is walk through the DOM and go grokking around in, in JavaScript trying to do things. So you, uh, you have to relax some of your client-side um, uh, notions. Uh, but the cool part is, is that all these components can now work together in the same uh, system. So we have multiple components here. This is actually composition itself. We've got the um, LTNG HTTP component which has been configured to point at our services API. So this component is effectively a proxy into uh, any REST endpoint, any HTTP endpoint, in fact, that you provided. In this case, it's going into uh, the standard Salesforce uh, REST APIs. Um, if you've got a remote site configured, you can proxy that out as well. Now, why is it proxied? Well, uh, a couple of reasons. One, we're using the Lightning data service uh, to get to the uh, a proxy. So we're going over a, a lightning action into an Apex controller, which again proxies it out. And the cool part about this is, is by using the lightning data service, we get things like uh, caching uh, for free. Uh, we can make our action storable, and we don't have to go and write a bunch of code trying to cache things. And this will use either the web cache or the app cache, depending on the container, depending on whether it's a, a web browser or it's a native client like iOS or Android. Um, the basic idea is that you can now browse all the services. Let's pick a version. Um, we can now go here and say, let's look at, uh, what's a good one here, maybe Chatter. And then in Chatter, go to Users. And then in the Users, I don't know which one of these will actually work, so let's see. There's my photo there. So this is just a little browser which uses that component. Now, what does the component look like? Uh, I'll show you this here. Let's bring up our dev console. And again, you're free to use Sublime or what, what have you. I just use this because it's built in and easy. And I've got this HTTP tester component. And this has all of my attributes that I use to set things, uh, URLs, uh, methods, params, uh, some timing, and that kind of thing. This is all the stuff that I've built for my particular app. And then down here, I'm creating the LTNG proxy HTTP. And this is my current working version until we move it into the LTNG namespace. And it's binding to these uh, attributes here, to these values, URL, method, params, headers, the body. Uh, and I've got methods for on success and on error. And then marking whether or not it's storable. So if you hit this a few times, if you're in a uh, container that supports caching, uh, let's find the right one here. There we go. So we can hit exec, we'll see, you know, server time and client time. And you'll see eventually the server time goes down to zero. The client time is actually very fast because the client's just basically getting the cache data. And then the timeout is set for, I think, 30 seconds on Salesforce One. In a Lightning application, you can tune that differently uh, depending on the, uh, the container you want to run inside. Now, a real-world use case for this is a recent items tab. So this is uh, very similar to the recent items you might see in uh, other um, um, parts of Salesforce, and this is a very simple component that uses that same Lightning proxy. And I'll just load that here. So we go to recent items, like so, and you'll see it uses the same component here, in this case pointing at the recent URL. Now additionally for this, um, for those who do things with other frameworks, um, this will work in a um, non-Lightning case or non-Salesforce uh, 1, and actually um, non-component case, we can go here to, um, let's see, JS test, I think. And if I bring up the console, and let's see here. If we can get this back down here, bring up console, and we'll click test and we get back the reply here. So this is a very simple JavaScript only example. It uses the component, but it's actually using the JavaScript API. So you can do $LTNG.htp and you can pass in a config component and then various uh, callback URLs and that sort of thing. Um, this is not necessarily the productized thing. We're just testing this out. I just want to kind of give you guys an idea of some of the other things coming in the uh, LTNG namespace. Um, there'll also be some events that allow you to uh, interoperate with things like App Builder so that you can have two components listening for and firing common events and they don't have to understand each other's custom events. Uh, and then we'll do some more of these later as well. We want to have a whole suite of these uh, that allow for, again, the more declarative style case, the markup driven case, so that it's uh, an easier to use uh, version of it. Okay, uh, a couple more quick things here. Let's go to 
another window. And I want to show you the uh, App Exchange. And if you go to App Exchange and you type in either Lightning or Component and do a search, you'll come to this special landing page. And we have uh, offerings from three vendors and kind of an early uh, launch here. This is, you know, we haven't done all the marketing around this, but you can install these in your org. Um, in my own org here, if I go to Setup and I go to Install Packages, you can see here now that I've got uh, some various things in here from uh, Clarisoft. Let's see, what else do I have? Um, I've got Clarisoft in this one. I think in another one I've got the ones from Taz and Documation. So uh, just like you would install things normally, you can install these in your org and start seeing those components and using them. So um, those are out there now. I'd encourage you to check those out. Um, if you're a partner or an individual who wants to uh, make your components uh, uh, you know, on the App Exchange, you want to offer them that way, please do so. It's actually very easy. Um, everything in Lightning is already designed with the standard Salesforce metadata in mind, so it's all packageable, installable. Um, it's very easy to get up and running. Um, you do need to pass the um, uh, security tests. Uh, we have a security guide now that will actually uh, help guide you through that. Um, and components are a, a little different than apps, but it's the same sort of ideas. You know, just, uh, just don't do things maliciously. Uh, obviously, Salesforce wants our customers to be able to trust the components that are available there. And then you can turn and use those in your own applications. Um, a quick example here. Let me bring up a different org and show you something called Lightning Extensions. This is part of our roadmap. It's part of the customization strategy. In this case, I've got a few things enabled as extensions. So in standard Salesforce One, you would not see this little uh, gradient bar here for the rating. So this is an ex example of an extension point that I've overridden with my custom component. And what's important about this is, is that this is driven by metadata. And the metadata has roughly a rule-like definition that says, if these conditions are met, display um, a custom component, in this case, my custom rating component. And the nice part about this is, is uh, it's effectively a late binding or almost like a patch to the UI. So we're not modifying markup. We're not rewriting the entire page inside of uh, 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 Lightning. Uh, we're not having to redo things uh, to make, make stuff like this happen. And importantly, it also supports the edit mode. And this is something that we've never really been able to do in the past. So if I click in here and type in hot, you'll see it move save it, and now we get updated in the main display here. Now what's interesting about this is this uses uh, data binding. So the components get a couple of attributes, including the record and the, um, the current value. And they can modify that. And whenever they do that, it's modifying it on the core record owned by the parent document. You don't have to write a bunch of code doing uh, REST or other calls trying to do your own updates. You're not trying to redo what's already in the Salesforce UI. You're just leveraging what's already there. So that's the real power of these components is that they're running in the same space. They're not in iframes. They're not a separate path. They're not a separate technology. It's, in fact, the exact same technology we use to build Salesforce One and all of the new Salesforce UIs you'll be seeing, including the App Builder. So um, we're running up on the last few minutes. We need to leave some time for Q&A. Uh, but I wanted to tell you a little bit about the roadmap and um, point out a few things that are coming uh, over the next couple of releases. Uh, we talked about the LTNG components. Those are obviously very exciting. One that we're um, very excited about is something we're currently referring to as Lightning Out. And the basic idea of Lightning Out is to let you run your components outside of the Salesforce uh, cloud. Uh, so you can imagine um, uh, being able to take a bit of markup or a bit of JavaScript and running it on your on-premise site or in a different cloud. And when you um, use that, you make a connection back into Salesforce, a secure connection actually based on the same technology we use for Canvas. And you'll get your components injected into the remote site at the specified point in your, your local DOM, uh, not via iframes. And that's, that's an important distinction. We're, we're very passionate about getting away from iframes. They, they cause lots of issues, especially on mobile devices and so forth. Uh, so your component is running directly in the DOM uh, with the uh, rest of the components there. And you can mix these up with um, 
uh, other components that run locally. And the nice part is, is it is a fully secure connection, so you can embed like a, a chatter feed, for example, in something remotely. Uh, you can embed uh, whichever components you want to in your remote site. And it's just exciting because we know there's a lot of people who like to use certain parts of Salesforce, but they can't move all their apps and all their sites into it. Uh, in many cases, they've got uh, technology restrictions, regulatory restrictions, and that sort of thing. So this is designed to help address that so that you don't have to make the, make the full uh, move, move into it, and you can still leverage all these components. And importantly, all those components are the same ones that run inside of Salesforce One and other Salesforce UIs. They're the same things you build with Lightning App Builder. So this is one uh, technology stack. It's one technology family, if you will. Um, there's, there's several things going on to help uh, support um, uh, customization of UIs, to support uh, making it easier for you to use these UIs in various places. Um, so if you're interested in things like the extensions, uh, it's in pilot. Uh, ask your Salesforce representative uh, to enroll you in the pilot program. Uh, you should be technical for this, though. It's, it's going to require some low-level stuff at this point. It's not hard, but it's not a drag-and-drop tool at this point, so just keep that in mind. Uh, Lightning out, we hope to have in pilot at some point. Uh, we don't have any uh, particular release dates in mind. Again, all this is covered by Safe Harbor. These are things that we're planning. I just want to kind of give you an idea of kind of where we're going with some of this. And look for some additional uh, features around the customizations. Um, uh, uh, Lightning App Builder will be the primary place you'll go to you know, drag and drop components, uh, be able to actually go and uh, probably get those components from App Exchange at some point directly from App Builder and basically build net new pages, modify pages, and that sort of thing. So as you start hearing about new Salesforce UIs and new initiatives, remember those are uh, a Lightning components that are powering all that. So that's what gets us excited about that. Um, with that, um, I think we'll wrap up here and have some uh, questions uh, that we can talk about. And I'd like to thank you for, for your time and encourage you to uh, visit uh, the various um, uh, websites, uh, go check out Trailhead and that sort of thing. And Roger probably has some good links he can show you now. So could um, other Java, could other JavaScript like uh, Meteor be hosted for UI styling? So if you're, the Meteor is kind of um, an exception because it is a different kind of an app. But as long as you have JavaScript or CSS that you want to use, uh, you just need to upload it to our uh, static resources, and then you can continue to use it. Just may I remember to uh, namespace it so that it doesn't bleed into other components, and you'll be good to use So I see the question says non-mobile app that is. I'm guessing, you want to, can you build non-mobile apps? The answer is yes. You can build standalone apps. This is my map test app. This uses the same um, uh, components that I use inside the map test over here. Like so. So you can see this is the same components. They're just arranged differently in this particular test. But it's two components being used, one in a standalone app, one not. Um, if you see a dot app extension in Salesforce for things like um, uh, App Builder, that's a Lightning app. Uh, one dot app that you see in Salesforce One, that is a Lightning app. So when you're running uh, Salesforce One from Android, iOS, etc., you're actually hitting a version of one dot app that's actually a Lightning app itself. Um, it has the hybrid hooks to basically uh, uh, do some things natively. Uh, Lightning is not a, a mobile framework. Uh, people oftentimes make that uh, incorrect assumption. It's a general purpose framework that happens to have some pretty cool optimizations for mobile. Uh, let's see. Lightning out. Build your own mobile app outside of Salesforce One. Um, yes, yeah, Lightning, Lightning out is not really meant for that case. You can actually build an app today. Um, using the mobile SDK and, a, and your own Lightning app. Just point it at the URL, it works perfectly. Uh, that's effectively what, Light, what Salesforce One is. It is a Salesforce version of that thing you're, you're describing there. Um, Visual Force is not being deprecated. Um, Visual Force is actually uh, approaching 11 billion uh, page views every month. It's, it's a humongous product force. Uh, it's always in the top three in terms of uh, users, volume, data, etc. Uh, it was developed for the existing Aloha UI. It's the customization piece for what we call Aloha, this existing UI. Lightning is designed to work with uh, modern single page applications. Uh, it doesn't do the same page to page you know, request response navigation um, uh, that, uh, that Visual Force and Aloha do. Uh, it's great for mobile. It's also great for modern desktop applications. So um, 
uh, you'll see new UIs coming out with that. And as we've talked about, we're looking to how we can best bridge between the two. All right, we're coming up on the hour, so I'm going to let Raja take over and uh, do the wrap-up. Right. Um, so we are almost uh, two minutes away from uh, wrapping up. Um, so one thing I kind of wanted to show before I talk about other stuff is, uh, so if you are using the latest uh, Chrome, uh, they kind of started to sh have this uh, provide this new menu where which kind of helps you while you're uh, developing your app. So it allows you to uh, normally reload, hard reload, and also empty cache and reload. So usually whenever I'm developing, I do the empty cache and hard reload because this kind of helps you quickly remove all the cache and everything and always see the latest and greatest version of your app. So that's just a tip I thought you know I will sh I'll share before I get onto the presentation slides. So the next steps is the first one is you know if you go to the developer salesforce.com forward slash calendar. So you will see a whole bunch of things, uh, webinars and in-person events. So just go to the developer.salesforce.com forward slash calendar and sign up for all these uh, cooler stuff that are coming up. Uh, like April, there are so many events. May so there are so many events, and we'll be updating this calendar um, in the future as well. Okay. So, also, if you want to play around, please feel free to you know sign up for a new DERG. Use the provided Bitly link, uh, bit.ly forward slash lightning dash org. So the one interesting thing about this is it has um, app builder. Um, uh, enabled, so you don't need to ask your sales guys or anyone. So if you sign up for this, you will get to play with uh, Lightning App Builder as well. So finally, Trailhead. So for those who haven't played with it, this is uh, a new way to learn Salesforce, uh, all parts of Salesforce. So please feel free to go to developer.salesforce.com forward slash trailhead, and you'll be able to learn Lightning components, Lightning App Builder, and all sorts of other uh, things that, uh, that are built on top of the force.com platform. With that, uh, let me thank you very much for your time. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, ping us on our forums. And also, you can um, uh, ping us on our Twitter accounts um, or just email us, and we'll be happy to answer your questions. <laughs>